Good morning boys and girls and welcome to Assembly. So Assembly is coming into your classrooms today from my kitchen, which is a little bit strange, but hey, we'll just go with it anyway. I cannot tell you how much it means to me and to all of the staff at Lawrence Kirk School to have everybody back in this building where we all belong. It's absolutely fantastic. And I know there's some things that are different and there's some new rules and things that we have to have to follow, but you are all doing a really, really super job with these and it is helping to keep us all safe. So thank you so much for all your efforts with that so far. We really, really do appreciate it. So today in Assembly, we are going to be thinking about what it means to be part of a team because you are all part of a team. You are part of a team in your house with the people that you live with. You are part of a team with the people in your class that you learn with all day, every day. And your teacher and your PSA are in that team as well, of course. And you're also part of a much bigger team, which is the Lawrence Kirk school team. Some of you are maybe in football teams or sports teams or maybe you go to brownies or guides or scouts or some of these things too. And these are all teams, but everybody who is watching this today is part of a class team and is part of a school team. And that is really, really important. It's really, really special. And each week in assembly, we are going to be thinking about what we can do to make sure that our class team and our school team is the very best team it could possibly be. I'm a little bit nervous about this. It's out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm going to attempt to make a cake today in assembly. So I've got all the ingredients that I need to make this cake. I'm going to go going to go through it just now. So the first thing I need is I need four tablespoons of flour. I'm going to put it into this cup here. Then I need two tablespoons of cocoa powder. So this should go in, into the cup here as well, give it a sort of squish around. Then I need four tablespoons of sugar. So I'm going to pour that into the cup as well. I've chosen the biggest cup that I can find in my house. And I'm giving this a good mix around so the flour, the sugar and the cocoa powder are all mixed in together and they're not sticking to the bottom. That looks okay, I think. So the next thing that I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in the three tablespoons of oil. That doesn't look very nice, but it's really, it is actually really important to the cake. And I've got three tablespoons of milk. So that's going to go in there too. And I'm going to give it a bit of a mix round. It's all starting to, to come together. It looks a bit gooey. Smells nice though. That must be the cocoa powder. That gives it the, the chocolatey smell. It's quite thick as well. I'm going to give it a good stir so that it's all mixed around. There we go. Finally, I need to pop in the egg. Oh, <laughs> careful, Mrs. Smith, not to get any shell in the in the cake mix there, because that wouldn't taste very nice, would it? So, give it a good mix in. Oh, it's slimy now. To get that egg yolk mixed in right through. Doesn't look very appetising at the moment, but I'm hoping it's going to taste quite nice when it's done, giving it a good, a good mix in together. Actually, it smells delicious. I wish you could, wish you could smell it from where you are. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and now all I need to do with my cake is pop it in the microwave for one minute and 30 seconds and cross my fingers and hope 
that all the ingredients come together to make a cake that tastes really, really lovely. Boys and girls, can you all cross your fingers because Mrs. Smith is not known for her baking skills. Right. I have actually genuinely got my fingers crossed here, boys and girls, and I really hope that you do too. It's going in the microwave now. Wish me luck. One and a half minutes, go. But Mrs. Cussell, we've managed to do this no problem at all. She's really good with the cooking and Mrs. Honeybone as well. Joke. Right, the time, time has come now to take a peek and see if I have successfully managed to create a chocolate mug cake in the microwave. Ooh. I'm quite pleased with that actually. It actually looks really nice and it smells even better. So I've got some ice and sugar here because yeah, let's be honest, everything looks better with a bit of ice and sugar on top. Boys and girls, there we go. There is a chocolate mug cake. Now, I used a few different things to make this cake. I had flour, I had cocoa, I had sugar, I had eggs, I had oil, I had milk. Which one of these ingredients do you think was the most important ingredient? Ask your teacher to press pause and have a chat amongst yourself about which of these ingredients you think was the most important one. Off you go. I wonder which ingredients you all thought were the most important. I'd be interested to know because in actual fact, every single ingredient that went in here was very, very important in its own right. And if each of the ingredients hadn't have gone in, we wouldn't have been able to create this absolutely delicious looking cake. I'm going to just test it out now to see if it does actually taste nice. It should have cooled down a little bit. Mmm, it's actually really, really good. Mmm, yum. I'm going to have another bit. It's hot, but it's actually delicious. So, every single ingredient that I put in here had to go in here to create this amazing cake. So, the chocolate, the cocoa gave it the chocolatey taste. The eggs held it all together. The oil and the milk stopped it being too crumbly. The, the flour made the cake rise. And the sugar made it lovely and sweet. And if I was to miss out any of those ingredients, the cake wouldn't have been nice. It wouldn't have been as good. It might not even have been able to eat it, to be honest. And our school team is a little bit like that. Your class team is a little bit like that. Every single person in each of those teams brings something that's really important, really individual, and really, really special. And each person counts. Every person is important. And if they weren't in the team, it wouldn't be as good. Every single member of our Lawrence Kirk school team is important and special and brings along their own unique contribution to the Lawrence Kirk school team. So first of all, our pupils are a part of the Lawrence Kirk school team. Of course, in goes the pupils. The second contribution to the Lawrence Kirk School team is our incredible staff, so they can go in there too. Also, as members of the Lawrence Kirk School team are our families, so they can go in there as well. We've got lots of other helpers as well that help the school to do a really good job, like our parent council, for instance. They're a really good helper for the school. We've got loads of people who help us out a lot so our helpers can go in there too. And we've also got our community, our school community, the people around about us who get behind the school and help the school to be the very, very best it can be. 
All of these different people are very, very important. I'm going to give it all a mix together. And the outcome is... Assembly, we are going to take some time to reflect together about what it means to be a really good team and the actions that we can all take to help ensure that our class team and our Lonskirk school team is the very best that it could possibly be. So today I would like to share an extraordinary video with you today. It's a video from the World Triathlon Championships and it involves two brothers. Jonathan and Alistair Brownlee. Now, Jonathan was well on his way to winning the gold medal in this championship. And it was a really big deal. It was on the TV and everything. He was well on his way to winning this gold medal. And then something extraordinary happened. Take a look. Oh, and he's starting to slow. And there is a little way to go. There's half a K to go. And Johnny is running out of time and is losing. He's losing his sense of direction. This is worrying. Oh, goodness me. This is a horrible sight. Jonathan Brownlee has lost it now and has staggered to a stop at the side of the course. And Alistair's stopped to help him along. And Alistair is going to try and carry his brother home. Dramatic scenes in Cozumel as the Olympic champion carries his younger brother towards the podium. Oh my God, I cannot believe what we are seeing here. Matt, is this allowed? Is he allowed to help his brother? You know, is that part of the rules? I'm not too sure. We've never seen anything like this before. Unbelievable scenes. Unbelievable scenes in Cozumel to finish in second and third, but Johnny can hardly stand. And Alistair is having to drag him across the line and pushing him home, pushing him home for second. Johnny finishes in second. Goodness me, what an incredible conclusion here. This is such a special and unique moment and an extraordinary act from somebody who is naturally very competitive and Alistair didn't even stop, have to stop and think about what to do next. He saw that Johnny was in trouble and without a second thought, without a blink of an eye, he looped his arm around his shoulders and he carried his brother over the finish line. And every time I watch this, I have a, a mixture of emotions. I have tears in my eyes and I want to jump for joy at the same time. I think it's an absolutely beautiful moment, the image of, one brother strong and determined, supporting the other who was struggling to even stay on his feet. And I think we can think about what this means for, for teams and for teamwork, because these two brothers are part of a team. They are part of the same family team and they did what they had to do to help each other out at the time when they needed it. So when we think about what makes a good team, we often think about having strong people, determined people, highly skilled people, and yet all of these things are important, but there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that kindness makes a great team as well. And that if you are showing kindness in your class and kindness throughout the school, that that is going to help to make our class and our school teams really, really great. So next time in your class or in your school, when you see somebody who is struggling a little bit, be the person that swoops in there and helps that person out. Put your arms around that person and cross the finish line together. As we move forward into this week, please, please, please be the person that notices those who are struggling and be that person who gets in there and does what they can to help that person along because that's just the kind of team members that we need here at Lawrence Kurt School. So today I'm going to leave you with a song. We're still not allowed to sing together, but that doesn't stop us listening and enjoying the music together. So I'm going to pop that on in just a second and I'll see you all next week.
Bye. Can the boys say hello? Hello. Can the girls say hello? Hello. Can the adults say hello? Hello. Can everybody say hello? Hello. Up high. Up high. Down low. Down low. Out wide. Out wide. Hello. Hello. Up high. Up high. Down low. Down low. Out wide. Out wide. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Good day. Good day. Yo. Yo. Hey. Hey. Hi. Good day. Good day. Yo. Yo. Here we go. Saba, Saba, Hola, Hola, Salam, Salam, Jambo, Jambo, Saba, Saba, Hola, Hola, Salam, Salam, Jambo.